And let's talk a little bit more about one of these FANG names. That would be Apple. Uh, the stock is flat today, um, $282 per share right now. The Wall Street Journal reporting earlier today that uh, the company would delay the launch of its next iPhone by one month. And so, Melody, I saw this story and thought, oh, this must be really bad for Apple. Um, certainly, they're going to face supply chain pressures just like every other company. Uh, they're probably the first American company that we we all kind of took note of because they had prepared for the, the Lunar New Year shutdown in China, then the factories didn't reopen. Um, but I look at a one-month delay in the production of this um, new iPhone, and I think, boy, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I do think it could have been a lot worse and the reaction overall perhaps is a little bit more hyped than merited, especially with those four new iPhone models, some of which will have 5G connectivity. We do know that was a boost to Apple shares pre-pandemic, right? So a lot of investor anticipation and hope were, t were tied uh, exactly precisely to that offering. I think a one month difference doesn't actually change the overall landscape. I think what does matter is what we talk about uh, quite often on this show, just in terms of the consumer finding whether or not that is necessary, whether that upgrade will be worth the cost, especially as more and more consumers are filing for unemployment, are not able to upgrade other things in their life where this probably will be very low on the priority list when it comes to discretionary spending. So I think the macro issues for Apple are much more significant in this case, and a one-month delay perhaps is not necessarily going to be a game changer here. Yeah, and uh, guys, to piggyback off Melody and Miles, you know, when you say it could have been worse, Miles, I still think it could get worse, and that would still be okay. I mean, it's a one-month delay for now, but let's see what happens. And as Melody mentioned, it's kind of like, pick your argument. I think there are quite a few arguments as to why Apple will be just fine. I mean, People aren't going to be looking to buy a new iPhone after such an economic downturn anyway. It's going to take a while. And in addition, there were already reports pre-coronavirus hitting America that Apple's 5G-enabled iPhones might not come so soon after all. And people were already ready. Analysts were ready to kind of focus on the positives of, you know, the upgrade cycle is taking longer anyway. Once that 5G iPhone does come, even if it's delayed, people will be motivated to upgrade when it comes because it's it supposedly is going to be so much better by leaps and bounds and so much faster. So I think whether it's delayed by a month or once we get through the worst of this, delayed by three or four months, whenever it comes, I'm sure a lot of people are going to buy this thing. And uh, that's why I don't think you're seeing much of a hit to Apple stock right now. Well, that raises an interesting point, Jen, which is um, I, I don't know if I uh, totally agree that people are going to necessarily delay buying an iPhone. And I actually am not sure what the 5G iPhone does. It's been like Every analyst for 18 months has been so sure the 5G iPhone is the next game changer. I'm quite skeptical of that notion. Faster, faster. Faster, faster. I mean, don't we all need more speed? You all know that I need more speed as I look grainy here, right? Don't I? I mean, don't you want me to have 5G here? I could do it all from my phone, maybe. I wouldn't have to have so many screens. I think this uh, brought back the idea of the super cycle, which we've, uh, I, I kind of have, we haven't thought about really for the last seven weeks, but can, is it important and can Apple ignite that somehow other than with the $399 iPhone, which I don't think is gonna do a ton for margins, which, but I do think is gonna be popular. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I would love speed too. Speed is great. No one wants less internet speed, but um, I think the the cycle of life that we've come accustomed to as consumers, you get a new iPhone every 15 to 18 months. I, I would be surprised if that was largely disrupted as a result of this, even in a downturn. We've never had a recession with an iPhone. So um, I think- Is that right? Good. Yeah, iPhone came out, in, I mean, it came out in 07, but it wasn't like, right. I felt like iPhone 4 in 2010 was the first- Oh, now everybody's got an iPhone. Wow. Um, so give Apple credit. Yeah, the financial crisis was the BlackBerry recession. And unfortunately for BlackBerry, it took out the device forever. So hopefully Apple doesn't suffer the same fate, but <laughs> I think it'll be all right. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen this time around. Uh, we'll see. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.